Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yogi Gawa's Network Solutions Group and today I'd like to talk to you about DAC Manager. DAC Manager is our latest piece of software that allows you to manage, view, and search multiple data files from multiple different recorders. It supports recorders like our FX100, DX100 and 200, DX1000, 1000N, and 2000 as well as our mobile series of recorders, the MV100 and 200, as well as the newer MV1000 and 2000. So to get started here, once you have DAC Manager installed, you'll just go Start, All Programs, DAC Manager, and go ahead and click on DAC Manager here. You'll also see that while we're here, there's a few uh, good instruction manuals. The one I really like is the Operation Guide. It shows plenty of examples. So I'm going to go to DAC Manager here. I've got it up and running and to get started for the first time you're going to go and click on file. Once you click on file you're going to go to either manual import or automatic import. Manual import essentially allows you to do stuff like do a one-time import of a folder worth of data or a particular file. However what's more interesting here is this automatic import capability. Automatic import can be combined with the automatic file transfer capabilities that is inherent to all the DAC station recorders. Part of why we're called the Network Solutions Group is just about all of our recent recorders contain a networking jack. So you can put these recorders on a network and as they create data files the DAC station can be configured to automatically transfer that file over to a PC via its built-in FTP services. FTP services, uh, there's various videos as well as documentation on how to set these up, but essentially it consists of setting up some parameters on the DAC station as well as installing a specific piece of software on a server type computer and then getting the two to communicate to each other. Also, we have a piece of software called DAC Explorer. DAC Explorer is much more simpler for arranging these automatic file transfers. Essentially, you install DAC Explorer and then you go to each DAC station, give it a network address, you go back to DAC Explorer and within DAC Explorer you essentially just input your IP address or network address for each of your recorders, you hit mount, you say I'd like to automatically transfer files and then you're done. The files will now just automatically as they're created get delivered to the folder you specified. So once that folder is specified and populated with data files you can then go in here and you can just go ahead create and pick whatever folder you're dumping those data files to. Alright, so in this case I have picked these particular folders and I've also included the subfolders for those units. And I've chosen to search every 10 minutes to automatically scan those folders to look for new files, but I could pick every day, every 6 hours, it's, it's up to you at that point. Okay. Um, also, when I bring in the files, I've got a choice if I want to automatically convert them to Excel or text files. So once that's set up, the first time you have it configured, you're probably going to want to go over here and pick Execute Immediately. So instead of waiting for the 10 minutes or 24 hours to scan those folders, this will automatically scan the folders for data files. Once Stack Manager finds data files, you'll start to see stuff like this. It'll break them down by each individual piece of equipment. All right. What it'll also do is it'll give you a view of all the data files. And you can view it by tag, by alarm, by display group, by message, by individual file, or by continuous blocks of data, which could be, you know, you could have 20, 30 different files that have one continuous range. All right. So once you have this, what you can now do is I could for example, do a search on uh, all tag names that have Volt 1 in them. All right, and so we can see this is what it brings up for a result. Do the same thing. Say I want to find all the tags that have Volt 2. And then once I find kind of what I'm looking for here, I can just double click on it. And we'll see down here, I've now got a graph of just that particular item of information. And once I'm on here, I can drop a cursor anywhere on the screen, see the values. If I don't want to see the values, I can come up here and turn off 
showing the values on the cursor. What I can also do is I can drag and drop, so essentially left click here, release my left click there, so now I've selected a range. I can go over here and, you know, see that range in a digital view. Or I could uh, go over uh, back to the trend and I could just click a single cursor on the screen and I could see some statistical stuff like min, max, peak to peak. I could uh, pick a range here and uh, go to this guy here, the control. And I could see the value at A, the value at B, what the difference is between the two, stuff like times. I could also go ahead and export that little chunk of data to Excel or export it to a text file. Okay, so I can go up here. If I have, say, multiple graphs, I could like do a tile. So I could see here's my trend, here's my graph. I could close those out. All right, I could then go here and say maybe look at it by alarm. And, uh, you know, I just want to see the alarms that have a uh, FIC in them. So I'll go FIC, do a search, and that brings me up all the alarms that are FIC. I can pick the particular one I want to look at. And there it is. There's the information, and it's showing it down here. Okay, I can sh see the point exactly where that alarm activated. switch over to this view. That's turning on the alarms on and off. can turn off that legend on the side if I want. I can go into this view here, list, where it's listing, when it went in, when it went off, stuff like that. I can go to message. I could do a message search on stuff like Yokogawa. shows me all the points with Yokogawa. I can double click on it. And there we go. I can see there's that particular message. I can turn it on and off. I can declutter my view. All right. I can go over here. I can see statistics on a various point here, what files it's within. And then anything I do with these I can similarly go and do it just for a particular recorder. Alright? So for example, say I wanted to do a search on alarms for a specific time, I could also go up here and go date time and put in a specific date and time range to search for alarms. Or I could say, you know, show me all the alarms in the past 30 days. You know, neat things like that. And once I've got something here, like a particular trend, I could uh, go and do stuff like insert my own mark, say I found something interesting. And I could go something like uh, say I had an issue with the network group. Alright, and there we go, now it's inserted there. Then I can go ahead and I can go file, save the graph as, and I can give it a name. I can go uh, And once I've got graphs saved, I can go ahead down here, click on this, and I can now search particular graphs for stuff. So I could uh, search on a mark that I've inserted, like uh, Yokogawa. All right, and these are all the graphs that have Yokogawa on it. If I want to search on the graph that has IT in it, I could do this. All right, I can bring it up, and there it is, right there. I can do stuff, zoom in, zoom out, can do various things with my scales, I can go search by various marks, if I want to get into deeper editing this graph, I can go here and go uh, general display settings and really get into changing scales and stuff like that. But uh, anyways, that pretty much wraps up DAC Manager here, I uh, hope this was a good introduction to you, and uh, take care, and have a great day.